Hello, good morning from NAB 2015. I'm going to tell you a few things about what we have done recently on films quality analysis. So again, a few words about films because it's always good to refresh the minds about what films is. It's a joint project between the EBU and the AMWA. And uh, we started uh, six years ago already, but uh, now time has come for success because we have had many vendors coming to NAB 2015 and telling us that they had decided to go for films eventually, which is good news. The uh, main principles of films are that uh, at what we had a few years ago is that sort of integrated system developed using some proprietary solutions. Some of them were already SOA based, but the APIs were proprietary from the different vendors. And it was very difficult for the different broadcasters to uh, actually interfere with the system and uh, either adapt to their different equipment or being able to, uh, to change equipment from different vendors. So what we are proposing now in FIMS is to have something more loosely coupled looking at the different processes which are involved into the workflow. And uh, we, have, uh, we have come with this SOA approach, uh, which is implementing both SOA and REST, uh, SOAP and REST in FIMS. And we have done the different services, but I'll come back to that. And uh, clearly, standardizing these common interfaces is essential to the future of uh, production and broadcasting in general. So what do we do? What is it to define a FIMS interface? It's about defining the operations between devices, either as a client or as an application. And uh, we are defining the different messages and we are defining the different notifications because uh, what is absolutely essential, essentially particular to films is that we are dealing with media. So media takes time, uh, transferring content takes time, transcoding content takes time, in particular video, big files, and we know about this. So we deal with the notifications that's necessary to tell the service, okay, I am doing something and now I'm completed, and then you have a notification saying, yes, now your content has been transferred from point A to point B, or it has been finally transcoded. And these are the sort of uh, information that we transmit between the different devices, and this is defined through the uh, FIMS interface. So as I said again, we are doing this in SOAP and in REST. The specification of FIMS can be downloaded, and we'll get the links at the end of that presentation. But uh, basically, we have uh, many schemas. We have SOAP wizards, and we have uh, REST indications on how to implement FIMS. And all this is documented from the schemas. So you are getting an HTML documentation. You can browse through it. It's very easy to navigate. And so that's a very flexible specification, but mainly for developers, I must say. FIMS 1.2 and FIMS QA. So this is what we are doing now, and FIMS 1.2 is going to be announced in the next few weeks. And <clears throat> this is what we are now providing in FIMS 1.2. So in FIMS 1.1, we had a media capture. We had the transformation of content, the transfer of content. In FIMS 1.1, we had the repository. Now we have uh, quality analysis. And we have also been working on time code to, so to support partial content. So that's a, a lot of uh, progresses in uh, FIMS 1.2. So FIMS QA in more details, what do we do? So currently, like in many systems, uh, QA tools do not have a specific interfaces. So each time that you want to integrate a QA tool into your workflow, you have to adapt your interfaces to the different vendors. So we are trying to find a solution that allows people to use a common interface, of course. And this is a FIMS QA group uh, goal. And we are doing this um, in collaboration with the EBU QC. The FIMS QA goals are, again, to define the FIMS QA API interface, which is a common interface to, in fact, interface with the QA tools. And uh, I will tell you what is specific about QA. We have added something new in addition to what we did before, because in the past we were only dealing with content, but now we are dealing with additional information like templates and reports. And these are these templates and reports here. And what does that mean? That we use, when we when we um, launch a job, in fact, we uh, provide a template to create the initialization of the test. We want to say from what part to what part do we want to make the test, what are the different uh, uh, parameters that we want to measure, uh, what is the sort of threshold under which the, the, the test is going to pass or fail. And uh, then we have the technical parameters coming from uh, QA, and these are defined in the EBU QC cards. 
So that's, again, what we get, so typical workflows, and we define the different technical parameters from the EBU, IO, QC cards, and then we have the QA interface through which we communicate with the tool that is going to produce a report in return. These are the QC cards as they are being presented, one card per parameter being, uh, by, by parameter being measured, and then for each of them you define the thresholds, and what it means is that in the EBU, in the FIMS QA template, you would refer to a card number to say, well, please make that test according to the definition of that card, so that makes things easier, that's a common re reference, that's, um, how to say that, in a persistent resource on the internet so everyone can look at these cards and see what it means to, when you want to make a test and understand the results. Typical workflow with QA, <clears throat> so you ingest content and you, have, you put it into a repository, then you take this content, you move it uh, into a different location where you are going to transcode this content. After transcoding this content, maybe you want to make a quality analysis test to make sure that the transcoding went well, okay? And if you are satisfied, is the, is the test passed, then you can again transfer this content from the transcoder location to a new repository. This repository could be, for instance, a server on which, uh, from, from where you are going to diffuse to di distribute the content, actually. So we can say that FIMS is covering the entire production chain from commissioning, ingest, down to distribution. That's typically a QA job cycle. Uh, you have the QA templates and reports. So this is very specific to QA. This is the first time that we do it in films that we have resources other than content. Okay? So these QA templates and reports are also resources. They are going to be referred to uh, with, uh, with uh, resource references, ref resource IDs, exactly like we do for content. That's very, very new, and that's going to be reused in the future in things like uh, for QA like FIMS AME for automatic metadata extraction. So what do you do in the template? You configure the test, okay? And that's what, he, what, what will be associated with the job request. And then you, uh, you can, either you can have this template embedded into the job request, or you can refer to an external document. And by the way, as we have defined a way to describe it in FIMS, to be FIMS compliant, you can also refer to an external document that would not be FIMS compliant and could be specific to a particular tool. So we are completely open. That's the maximum flexibility we can offer. And then we can also use the um, template that is contained in a report as, as, as a test, as a new test pattern. So we can reuse this. And uh, as I said, so non-QA and non-QA reports can be supported. So non-QA templates and reports are supported in addition to what we have defined in the specification. And in the report, then you get the entire report in the job response, or you can have a reference to an external document, or you can have a reference to a report that is not FIMS QA compliant. And uh, we also put a reference to the report in the BM content description so that you have a link between the content that has been tested and the report that is associated with it. It can be a full content, can be a part of content. We can do whatever we want with this. So the entire job cycle is very simple. You launch a job request with a different configuration information with a reference to the QC card that's available. You, you can define a temporal or spatial scope. You can define what, where you want to make this test in time and space. And uh, then you say when you want to start the test and you, want, you say when you, you would like this test to be finished. And then you start the job, then you do the job, you finish the job, you complete the job and you return a report. Okay? So that's a complete uh, job life cycle for FIMS QA. Very simple, totally compatible with what we have done before for FIMS. So uh, nothing new, just adding new things like these resources. QA reports, that's where we have different uh, sorts of information. We have um, two levels, actually, of information in a QA report. We have things which are relatively simple, like pass or, pass or fail, okay? And can be pass or fail global to the entire test, because the test can be made of several subtests. So each subtest are going, is going to have a pass or fail flag, and then the overall test is going to have, accordingly to what you get, a, an overall pass or fail flag too. But you can also get a lot of information about the measures on the different parameters and what has been found, actually. So that's not going to be used directly for repairing content, but that provides you with a lot of, of information about the status of your content. What is it? 
We provide information about the tools that has been used and also actually the operator because very often in QA, in quality control, you have the human intervention. So we are identifying the people who have been involved into the process when necessary. We have this test template that is included in the report so that you remember what the results are associated to in terms of the configurations that you use. And uh, then you have the links to the different resources and you could provide, for instance, a picture illustrating the default that has been measured. Okay? So what is next? We have the business board in FIMS with different uh, media companies who are coming together and decide what FIMS is doing next. All right? So for the time being, there are two things which are being discussed and which, which will probably go into FIMS 1.3. One part of it is automatic metadata extraction. So you can think about it as being something very similar to what we are doing in, uh, in quality analysis. So instead of saying, please take this piece of content and, and measure it, qualify it, so you would say, please take that piece of content and extract some metadata out of it. And the result is that just like you have a report in the quality analysis, you are going to get an XML file with all the metadata extracted from the content. Could be, for instance, an XML time text file, okay, in which you have the speech to text translation. And you know there are already applications today that say, look at that keyword, you find the keyword, you click on the keyword, you go directly to the time code and you, you find the content where this word has been said, you know. So we are working on this now in themes. We are making rapid progress and actually we are also develop a set of AME cards like we have for QC cards. We are going to define AME cards where we will extract, where we will uh, describe the different features that the tool can extract. Okay? And uh, last but not least, uh, semantic web. We want to move uh, from a traditional uh, metadata into a more semantic approach. And in fact, if you look at the FIMS data model, like uh, with the BM content, BM object, uh, essence, now the report, the templates, and soon the AME uh, files, then it's, it's really, we are, we are semantic ready, actually, in FIMS. We have already all the basis for a good semantic model. So these are all the companies, actually not all, because we have much more companies now, but I, I did not have space on my slide. But uh, we have more than 130 members in FIMS, and uh, this uh, NAB was extremely successful because we really have vendors coming to us and saying, presenting things that you will find on the YouTube channel too, and saying, we are doing it, we have decided to go for it, we think it is essential. And so we, we are extremely pleased about this NAB 2015. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, you can contact me. Uh, here you have the um, themes.tv website where you can find a lot of information about the members, also the implementers. Uh, and then you have the wiki and you have the YouTube channel where this video and others are going to be posted for NAB 2015. And you can join us on the LinkedIn group. Thank you very much.